The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to our Tech Talk webinar series, where we are discussing real-world Wi-Fi deployments and sharing our perspectives with you based on our conversations that we are having with our customers. My name is Ashish Bhatia, and in the next 30 minutes or so, we will be discussing the topic of Wi-Fi in student dormitories. A bit about myself, I am Senior Technical Account Manager here in Samsung Networks. I handle strategic enterprise Wi-Fi accounts. And as part of that, I'm able to hear firsthand from CIOs and IT directors some of the challenges and pain points they have as far as network deployment goes, uh, both from the wired as well as wireless side. Now, before we begin, uh, let's get a couple of housekeeping items out of the way. Uh, if you haven't already, I highly recommend signing up for the webinar series on our partner portal. Uh, we've done a few of these already. Uh, they're all recorded, so if you go onto the partner portal, you should be see you should be able to see those recordings if you've missed them. Um, and then here are the list of upcoming webinars. So one second here. All right, so on March 8th, there is no webinar. So if you've signed up for these, uh, as you are aware, uh, you know, we've kind of signed you up for all of them at one time. Uh, but in Outlook, you would still see, if you're kind of saving it in Outlook, you would still see something on uh, March 8th. There is no webinar on March 8th. On uh, March 15th, I come back and I'll be talking about uh, private networks over LTE, which is a hot topic these days. Uh, once again, uh, this is the discussion will be revolving around what are some of the business drivers uh, that are uh, leading up to you know enterprises looking at uh, private networks over LTE. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the spectrum that uh, is kind of going to be used for uh, for enabling this. Uh, which is the 3.5 spectrum, the CBRS. So we're going to talk about uh, spectrum sharing. There's all, a lot of good information here and, and real-world use cases for, for, for these kind of networks. Uh, then on March uh, 22nd, my colleague and resident YouTuber, Terrell Boyer, is going to come back and he's going to talk about how to turn your Wi-Fi into revenue. That should be a good one. And if you haven't subscribed to his YouTube channel, I highly recommend you do that. There's quite a lot of good information there, uh, Wi-Fi wise or otherwise. Um, all right, so with that out of the way, uh, oh, there's one more thing. If you have any questions, uh, there is a uh, window on the right side of your screen that you would see uh, which says questions. Just go ahead and type those. Towards the end of the webinar, if we have um, some time left, I would definitely try and address those. Uh, if not, you can reach us as at uh, v.info at samsung.com. This is also the email you can send uh, if you haven't seen the link to registration. So, uh, so let's get started. All right, so uh, Wi-Fi in student dorms is no longer an optional amenity. Uh, I was once talking to a director of student housing and he told me that uh, uh, the question that comes from students now that are standing up for these residences is no longer do you have Wi-Fi. Uh, it is how do I get into your Wi-Fi. There is an assumption there that not only that uh, the residents uh, says have Wi-Fi, but it's also very good. Uh, connectivity and easy access to the Internet is absolutely critical. We're at a point where uh, Wi-Fi is a major selling point for these student housing communities. And so there's an effort to make sure that, you know, some of the challenges and pain points are well addressed. And that is what I intend to do as part of this webinar. The way I've laid down the presentation is I want to talk about what the traditional approach has been with, uh, you know, deploying Wi-Fi and what the de Wi-Fi deployment strategy has been. And, uh, and then kind of look at it from a pros and cons perspective because, you know, uh, there are things that work with this approaches and there are things that don't work. So why not take the things that work and then improve upon the things that don't work and provide a solution for that. And at the end of the day, I'll propose a solution that uh, seems to be really, really well uh, received in the industry. So uh, that being said, today 
if you sign up uh, for student dormitories or your residences, uh, the students have two options. One is, you know, there are some universities and uh, housing communities which allow you to order the bandwidth via service provider, which kind of caters to that area. And uh, this is similar to what you do if you live in an apartment today. And, uh, uh, you know, you basically go in, you call your carrier like a Frontier or Cox Communication, whoever serves uh, that particular area has a or, or has some sort of an agreement with the property with and you order your bandwidth and you go ahead and uh, you sign up with them and, and they'll basically bring in a, a CPE, a modem, and they'll put it install in, the, in your unit. Um, and then there is supplementary Wi-Fi that is provided by the housing itself, which is in the form of a guest Wi-Fi in the common areas, in the mess halls, libraries, and things like that. Um, so that's how uh, some of the universities are operating. And, uh, and in this particular case, we'll di discuss some of the rev share models, revenue share models that they have uh, with, uh, with these carriers. But uh, if you look up, uh, like for instance, uh, you know any of these carriers you'll see there are packages that are specifically designed for students you know stu student wi-fi packages and things like that so this is very prevalent even now the second option is where the housing actually provides universal wi-fi like student wi-fi and this might be an extension in some cases of the campus-wide wi-fi that is available um, and in that particular case there is a good possibility that the vendor that is uh, providing Wi-Fi infrastructure in the campus is the same vendor that is providing the Wi-Fi in the residence halls and the residence units. Um, and uh, or if it's if it goes for a bed or something like that, there might be two different vendors providing Wi-Fi in in that area. But the idea being that there is you know you are all in the blanket of a, a singular Wi-Fi system, if you will, while in the housing community. So. Uh, that being said, let's look at some of the pros and cons of uh, both of these approaches, right? So if we look at the service provider solution with the complementary guest, guest Wi-Fi that uh, the housing provides, uh, the pro here is that you have, uh, you know, a home-like Wi-Fi type of an experience where essentially what ends up happening is you look at this diagram here, you have a CPE or a modem that uh, comes in and is installed and you have Wi-Fi and uh, and you have a private network of your own and you are able to easily communicate uh, within the, like the devices inside your unit like the way you do in in your apartment or in your in your residences or wherever you know in like a, in a residential type of a scenario uh, so that's that's a, you know that's a good experience as such there's no there's nothing wrong with it uh, you get a public ip address for each of the units so you know obviously the cpe uh, that uh, is installed uh, provides you a Wi-Fi connection on the private side, but also gives you an individual public IP address. Uh, the modem, if you are tech savvy enough, which students tend to be, you can easily log on to these modems and, uh, um, you know, using an IP address and a simple username and password, which is actually back at the back of these modems. You know, they, they provide that information for you. So you can go in and uh, play with the Wi-Fi settings. You can, uh, you know, configure some port uh, forwards and things like that, which is very good for, you know, if you are using certain applications. We will discuss those. Um, and then from a, uh, you know, device interaction perspective, right? You know, if you look at this unit again, you have your, your, uh, PCs or MacBooks or your mobile devices, your tablets, and then you have your printers. You know, I call them uh, these kind of devices as uh, something that can be easily auto discovered. You know, you have an application that comes with it if you're using mobile print these days, right? Um, you, uh, you have an application that comes with a printer that can easily allow you to discover that printer and, and print to that. Uh, the similar thing works with Apple. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, they use Bonjour for discovery. Um, the idea being that they all work on this concept of uh, multicast DNS and it is very well designed to work in a private network space, uh, typically a home type of a Wi-Fi environment and that's why they work very well. And the same thing applies to casting if you want to mirror your uh, content onto your TVs and things like that. So the, the inside unit device interaction works beautifully in this type of a model. Um, then there is a rev share model which I've put in the pro column, but if you talk to, you know, some of the student housing uh, uh, folks, they'll tell you that, uh, you know, the way this works is 
sometimes the carriers would come in they would basically bring in bandwidth to uh, a central location in the property and then then the property is then responsible for wiring up these units um, and then there's some sort of a, a model agreement upon you know what ends up happening once the you know once once an internet is actually provided to a particular unit so you know there is definitely some advantage there's some revenue that is coming in but that might not be good enough uh, to cover the cost of the wiring that actually goes in so it's kind of a gray area there i, I it should basically rise somewhere in in the middle between pro and con the con obviously is if you are a student and you signed up uh, with the residence and you are you you show up there on day one you don't have wi-fi you know you have to call up uh, like the way we do to our carriers and you, know, you have to stay in line and then they schedule you and then someone uh, will have a they'll have to schedule you for a truck roll right they'll have to be someone from uh, the carrier coming in with that cpe to install it in your unit and sometimes that leads to longer wait times right i mean you have uh, at least a week or two weeks that you've kind of started school and you really need internet connection in your in your apartment and you don't have it you know you're kind of relying on uh, the uh, the common area wi-fi that is provided by the university so that's not a good experience. It's a frustrating experience for a student. Uh, there's no mobility. If you have a unit-wide Wi-Fi with every unit having their own, you know, CPE and broadcasting and SSID, there's no mobility there. You have Wi-Fi while you're in the unit and then you go out and there's no Wi-Fi and then till the point you get to a common area. There's obviously no centralized management uh, for uh, student housing or IT to look at what's actually going on. Uh, and then what happens when the student moves? So, you know, this happens all the time. The student moves from one unit to the other or they're just uh, graduating and then moving away. The CPEs and the contracts that they've signed up with the carriers, that becomes a messy situation for the student housing to deal with. So this is obviously is a major pain point in scenarios where, uh, you know, this kind of a deployment model is used. Now let's look at the housing provided uh, Wi-Fi model, right? This is uh, something that kind of takes care of quite a lot of these uh, challenges, but it has the challenges of its own. So uh, the pros here, obviously you have Wi-Fi available at move-in and uh, the access to that Wi-Fi is typically uh, done the same way that you access Wi-Fi in your uh, university with your student credentials. There is centralized management, uh, whether you have whether you are using the same Wi-Fi infrastructure in the university and and kind of extending that to the residences or even if you're using a different Wi-Fi vendor or infrastructure in the residence halls but there is some level of centralized management across the halls or across the buildings uh, which is very very important from an IT standpoint you obviously have full mobility because now you have deployed an enterprise class Wi-Fi solution uh, in your residence halls or you've deployed it inside the units depending on what you've decided to do but you have full mobility where users can you know move through the campus and they have wi-fi everywhere uh, obviously secure access because you can use mechanisms like uh, you know 802.11x uh, uh, or, 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 or sorry dot 1x phasing out there a little bit uh, but you can use uh, that kind of mechanism to interface to some sort of a radius active directory and uh, authenticate and onboard your users um, and so you are providing end-to-end -end encryption in that case also and then student moves right so it doesn't matter if the student moves from one unit to the other uh, you're still accessing Wi-Fi you still have the same uh, WLAN profile that you're connecting to uh, and you're still using your credentials. So it does not matter where you move. Um, and then uh, the way the university is able to make some money out of it is there is a basic packet charge uh, that uh, the students pay as part of uh, the sign up, right? Uh, and that kind of allows them, uh, depending upon how uh, a university or student housing is doing it, uh, you can pay for a basic charge a package which kind of gives you a quota of let's say 10 gigs for the whole month which might be good enough for you um, if you look at your cellular carrier right i mean they they give you three or five three or five gigs for the whole month and sometimes that's good enough if you are a, a heavy user uh, sometimes you don't have an option you know you don't have uh, that kind of option or the university has no option for you to kind of dynamically change that depending upon your needs 
Uh, so that's, uh, you know, at least there is some revenue coming in, but, uh, you know, again, that's something that can be improved upon. Uh, on the challenges side with, uh, with, uh, with housing provided Wi-Fi, secure onboarding is a big deal, right? And, and, uh, you know, also known as BYOD, where you bring your own devices, students are obviously going to bring their additional devices inside the unit. How do I securely onboard, uh, these devices? And there are many, uh, mechanisms available out there, uh, and they're not, cheap in any way, right? There's a backend infrastructure that has to be able to support this kind of a model. So when I say secure onboarding, I'm talking about, you know, a student uh, logging on to a Wi-Fi network uh, and is basically redirected to a portal page where he is asked to download a certificate onto a machine uh, and then uh, use that for mutual authentication purposes so that you know that this device actually belongs to you know, uh, a particular student um, and then bringing them on on onto your network. Uh, so there are back end uh, mechanisms available out there, but they uh, come up with a lot of uh, bells and whistles and there is special expertise needed to manage those. Uh, so that's that's a big deal in 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 that kind of environment. Uh, there's obviously a security vulnerability. You can have RF wide uh, encryption and you can have security on the RF side, but you know, if you're still under the umbrella of the same layer two domain. So if you look at, uh, you know, your student wide network, there's a very good chance that you are, you know, depending upon the number of students, part of the same VLAN infrastructure. So it could be a slash 20, depending upon again, how many students are there in the university and how you've kind of segmented the network. Uh, but you know what that allows, is a security vulnerability on the wired side because now I can open up, uh, you know, an IP scanner. I can see exactly what devices are, um, you know, connected or are online. Now, there are ways to kind of avoid it when, when you do things like client isolation on the APs and things like that. But then client isolation then causes issues with device interaction, as I was talking about, you know, when you're talking to connect to like a printer or you're talking to connect or, or talk directly to your, uh, you know, uh, mobile print or you're trying to kind of stream some data onto on the TV or things like that. So client isolation brings in those kind of challenges. Then you've got your bandwidth hogs, right? Uh, I was once talking to uh, someone in student housing. They told me between the hours of 7 p.m. to 2 p.m. 2 a.m. in the morning, the amount of P2P traffic that goes through the network is something which is uh, which 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 basically brings the bandwidth down that has caused them to kind of upgrade their bandwidth uh, you know to like gigabit speeds now and that's uh, that's a little too much right that you could easily manage the bandwidth that is available to you uh, so that so the bandwidth is always accessible like you know it's available to all the students it should always be available to all the students you should not have these bandwidth hogs uh, that are causing issues in the network you know, um, there is no monetization. So the monetization piece is pretty important because right now, as I said, there's a basic package that you can get. And, uh, you know, there has to be an easy, flexible way for the students to just upgrade their bandwidth. Very similar to how they can do with service provider where they can call them and pay them some extra and get additional bandwidth if need be for the for for the ones that need that kind of bandwidth. If you're downloading, you know, 4K movies all day long, uh, then, you know, you need more bandwidth, go for it, go buy it, you know, so that the university can actually make some money out of it. Um, similarly, there is uh, more ways to kind of, uh, you know, upsell on this kind of a solution. So we're still not seeing uh, universities capitalize on uh, the Wi-Fi investment that they're making. Gaming is a big deal. So uh, in student dorms, uh, you know, gaming Obviously, you know, you have units where students bring their Xbox devices and things like that. And when you do a model like here, right, where you have a CPE, uh, your Xbox, uh, you know, if you play Xbox and PlayStation, there is a concept of open NAT, uh, which leads for you to have a better performance while you're doing online gaming or multiplayer gaming. Um, and uh, open NAT, essentially, if you look up uh, in case of Microsoft, they are talking clearly about what kind of ports need to be opened up on your modem for you to come in and, 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 and get a much better experience for online gaming, for multiplayer gaming. Um, and so this model allows us to do that. But uh, in the case where you are now 
you know, uh, under the umbrella of the university Wi-Fi, there's only one public IP address, remember, uh, or in some cases there might be, a, there might be two public IP addresses depending upon, you know, how, what kind of carriers you're bringing in for, uh, for reliability. But you cannot port forward from one public IP address to multiple units that are trying to do this. There's, there's no ways you can do that. You know, so that's a, that is a challenge right now. How do you kind of approach this? How do you create, you know, how do you assign a public IP? Remember on the pros column on the service provider side, I have one public IP for each unit. There's definitely an advantage of having that uh, because, you know, there might be other applications like the one that I, that I just described that might need that public IP address. Auto discovery. So auto discovery works very well in our service provider solution because a CPE, every device uh, inside the behind the CPE can talk to each other very nicely. But again, if you are looking at, uh, you know, discovering your printer in a layer two domain that you're sharing with uh, almost all the units that are in the residence halls or in the residence areas, uh, then you pull up your uh, mobile application and you can easily see every printer that is available. Uh, on the network, you know, and uh, if again, if I have, you know, client isolation turned on to kind of make sure that this doesn't work, then I cannot even find my own printer. So how do I go about solving these challenges? So our approach, whatever approach that we've come up with, we've looked at these from the perspective of, you know, take the best of both worlds and propose a solution that will kind of incorporate every single scenario. And that's what we've come up with. Uh, this is our uh, Wi-Fi solution ecosystem. Uh, we obviously uh, have our controllers. We have access points that can go in the common areas uh, that go inside the rooms. We have in-room APs. That's a deployment strategy that is very common these days. Uh, you know, we start the discussion by saying we don't want to do hallway type of model. We want to do uh, in-room type of a model. Sometimes you might even go you know, two APs inside uh, a unit. Uh, if it's like, you know, there are bedrooms in there that don't get good coverage. And then we have outdoor APs if you want to provide outdoor uh, coverage. And then uh, tying it all together is our Samsung Access solution, uh, which is basically a software solution which takes care of all of these items, right? It's a router, firewall, uh, it provides SD-WAN type of capabilities. Uh, it has a, a inbuilt AAA platform all sorts of things that uh, the Samsung Access can easily interface with our controller and to bandwidth management. There are all sorts of hooks available for managing bandwidth. And the biggest piece is micro segmentation. We'll talk about how micro segmentation in the student dormitories can help, uh, you know, offset some of these challenges that you're seeing today with student Wi-Fi. So with that in mind, let's look at what our solution would be. So with our approach, we're basically going to go uh, with in-room APs. We're basically going to put in in-room APs in every uh, single one of these units. Even, you know, we're not going to uh, compromise on that. We're basically just going to put up an in-room access point, bring in CAT6 into every room. The advantage of doing this is you get these four Ethernet ports uh, that can then split up wired connection inside the unit. Um, and so if you have wired devices, you want to wire up some of these devices, you can do that. Um, and one of the features of these wired switch ports is the fact that we, when you connect something or wire something up, we can actually tunnel all of that traffic back to our main central location uh, and then assign a VLAN to that device, uh, you know, based on that tunnel. We don't have to have local switches have any sort of VLAN configuration. So that's another advantage. The PoE pass-through is also something which is very interesting. Uh, it has, uh, it serves two purposes. One is if you have any sort of a PoE device inside the unit, like a PoE phone or a wipe phone, which you not normally don't see in uh, in student dorms. But, uh, but the other advantage is if you end up in a situation where you've done your design and there's certain apartments or certain units where you have multiple bedrooms, and one EP, even in that case, we have like concrete walls and things like that, uh, is not cutting it, right, to, to multiple bedrooms. Instead of running another cable from the IDF location back into another bedroom, you can use this PoE pass-through to, you know, uh, to daisy chain another AP and then bring it back to the network. So it's not kind of meshing it in any ways. It's still a wired connection coming back to uh, the main switch. So 
there is definite advantages of using this uh, type of an AP in inside the room. Uh, secure onboarding is supported in our platform. And the way it would work is you, when students log in, there's a universal Wi-Fi that shows up uh, in the community. Uh, you log in and uh, you basically get a portal page where you can uh, enter your username, password, which would be your AD credentials that you use in uh, university. And then our system will uh, talk to the central database. It could be an act Active Directory. It could be another database uh, that you might be using. We've interfaced with many of these. Um, and we kind of uh, onboard you that way. Once you've onboarded, uh, you get your own personal portal where you can go in and you can easily add your headless devices or devices like uh, you know your roku your printer and they all can be easily added uh, or onboarded onto the system using this now, you don't have to have any sort of uh, you know complicated system in the back end our access solution can easily take care of this for you um, and there are many ways how we can interface with active directory if it's something that requires a radius interaction then the access also has a radius proxy built in uh, which can easily talk to uh, you know a radius server on on the back end and then you know talk uh, ldap directly also so there are many ways we can uh, we can interface with the backend uh, authentication infrastructure. Then we've got bandwidth management. This is something which uh, you know we, we have so many ways we can manage the bandwidth. Uh, is we can do per account. So when someone logs in uh, to the portal and they they put in their credentials, we can basically put them in a policy where uh, they get x amount of bandwidth um, or they get x amount of quota. Um, and they are able to burst certain amounts. So when you do like a speed test or something like that, you see your amazing speeds. But in actuality, uh, we're actually just assigning you 10 meg in the back background. We don't want you to kind of hog the entire bandwidth, you know. And so uh, there are many hooks like that uh, that that are in our system, and and they are designed to an extent where you know there is proactive monitoring of the bandwidth so if someone is actually abusing the bandwidth we have dpi infrastructure deep packet infrastructure inside this box can recognize you know someone is doing peer-to-peer -peer traffic and and that peer-to-peer -peer traffic is not allowed to exceed x amount of bandwidth the moment it does we can put you in a policy which kind of brings your bandwidth down uh, and and send an email out to the IT administration staff that hey this one you know someone tried to do this and we've basically now invoked the abuser policy for this particular uh, account and you can easily trace that in the background so you know all of these things would require hours and hours of IT administrations figuring out what what exactly is causing it versus we've kind of made it very very simple very very proactive um, and have we have event based triggers and quota based triggers if someone you know if a particular event occurs send an email out and take this particular action um, so it's 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 automated to the most for the most part then we've got micro segmentation this is uh, the key to bringing everything together because if you see micro segmentation kind of takes care of that home like wi-fi experience uh, each unit uh, is in their own personal area network. So the way this one will work is you have a student who signs on to Wi-Fi, who logs on to Wi-Fi, and they enter their uh, you know credentials. Uh, this could be AD credentials. So we talk to AD, and AD can now come back. So Active Directory can now come back and tell us that hey, this guy is definitely a student, and he belongs to room 402. Uh, the system will then allocate the appropriate VLAN for v, uh, for room 402. Uh, the moment your VLAN is allocated and you're onboarded to the network, uh, now you can go into your portal and add all the devices that are part of your for your ecosystem, right? So, so if I go back to this slide here, now uh, the laptop in this particular case is the student's laptop, a Chromebook or something like that, uh, that they used to onboard. They've been placed in their VLAN uh, of the unit, which is very similar to this kind of a model. And now they can add their printer's MAC address. They can add their Chromecast MAC address, Roku's MAC address, whatever headless devices they bring in onto the portal. And uh, and those automatically become part of the same uh, network ecosystem. And now I can easily talk to uh, those devices, interact with those devices without having to worry about 
the devices in room 403 or or any other room because every single one of these units will be in their own personal segment and so this is a very big deal so students are part of their own segment because of that i can now do bandwidth uh, you know shaping traffic shaping based on that i can have account based bandwidth management as i talked about and and it's this kind of also gives me this home like wi-fi experience with the cpe and the portal to look at what kind of traffic i'm i'm seeing from all these devices and uh, and this when the student moves uh, you know the pan moves with it because again you are you know wherever you are at inside the campus uh, let's say if you're in the pool area and you want to be able to print into the printer onto your unit you can basically pull up your phone while on campus hit print and it'll only print that uh, you know uh, the paper on the printer in your unit that's the whole uh, you know that's that's the whole idea of doing micro segmentation from a security standpoint remember i talked about you know everybody sharing that one l2 domain because we are vlaning it out at that extent if you pull up your uh, if someone wants to you know generate an attack and they want to see what other devices are available uh, so that i can create an attack on then if you do uh, an ip scan the only devices that you would be able to see are your own devices and your default gateway now if you go ahead and uh, you know attack your default gateway the only segment that you're going to affect is your own personal segment it's not going to affect anybody else because remember we have bandwidth hooks in place we have triggers in place which is going to defect which is going to easily detect it and it's going to put it in the abuser policy um, so it's very, very well thought through and it kind of gives us a lot of flexibility from, uh, you know, security standpoint and adding these devices standpoint. Gaming. Uh, remember, I mentioned about how uh, open NAT works. You need a public IP address for open NAT to work because you have to basically go in and, uh, you know, create uh, those port forwards. Uh, you cannot do that in, in uh, you know, in, in the in a shared Wi-Fi system because you have carrier NAT and you just have one public IP. Uh, in this particular case, the university can actually, uh, you know, rent or or buy uh, a, a slash 26, for instance. And, and, you know, you don't have to have one-to-one -one, uh, type of a situation. With, uh, let's say if you have 300 units, you don't need 300 public IP addresses because not all of them are going to need this. So you can uh, probably lease about 50 or 60 of those. Uh, and and kind of assign using our system uh, a public IP to a particular unit, and that would again bring us back to this model, which is which we like in in terms of doing gaming, because you can see that there is a public uh, there's a private IP address 192.168.1.0, which is a private network, and then there's a public IP address 6667, you know which is associated with it so now i have uh, that kind of capability where i have my own static public ip address that i can uh, i can manipulate and 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 port forwards i can apply my port forwards to so this is uh, something which is very big uh, and if you talk to anybody in student housing they'll tell you this how often this topic comes in from a monetization perspective our platform now allows you to uh, upsell the bandwidth right because and this is again something that they can do through the portal uh, there is a sign up uh, page on the portal where they can they they can basically go with a free plan or they can go with a higher tiered bandwidth plan where they are paying a certain amount and you can give them a more quota for the month uh, so if they need instead of 10 gig they need like 30 gig or 50 gig you can you can buy that as an upsell and then you can also upsell that static public IP address because if you want that capability, you can easily upsell this additional IP address and make revenue out of it, which is what something that is not being done today. You know, so there's may, ways to kind of uh, monetize on uh, a really, really good Wi-Fi infrastructure, very well thought through uh, and uh, and kind of get uh, some additional revenue out of it, which is something that. Uh, you know it's not happening as often you know it kind of gives you that additional revenue that that you can bring in now this doesn't of course you know discount the fact that uh, you still need uh, a very very good rf design you know you still need a very good predictive plan you still need the rf optimization you know to make sure that you know if you're going inside the room uh, you're obviously going to have a very you know uh, you know very uh, noisy floor like rf floor 
you know so you want to make sure that you are designing it right you are you are doing your channel assignments correctly your rs plans correctly it doesn't discount that obviously you know it does also doesn't discount uh, the fact that you need a very good uh, you know back end uh, you know wired infrastructure uh, what we've done is we've kind of looked at as again we've looked at these pros and cons and kind of made it uh, easy uh, for anybody uh, to operate so so uh, well, that's all that I had uh, for today and uh, hope this uh, information was helpful. Uh, if you need more information about uh, the Samsung Enterprise Solution for Student Housing and MDUs, uh, do visit us at uh, www.samsung-networks.com. Uh, until next time, uh, have a nice rest of your day and the remainder of your weekend. Thank you.